hopefully we're back. Sorry about that. I have no clue what's been going on with the system, but it decided it was going to have a glitch. So hopefully we are back. So where were we? I'm going to just grab one of these just to go through again. So if anybody missed us and didn't come back to us or is coming back in a few moments, Summer Blooms dye is the one we're working on. I've just done the two smaller petals. I'm just going to show you what I did really quickly um, with the larger one that I've just cut out. So it's literally taking a stylus tool and we are just going over everything. Hopefully a few people, if you're there, please let me know that you've come back to us. If not, then hopefully you'll come back and watch us on record later. And if you are on YouTube or on Facebook, we'd love to know which one you're watching on so that we know which platform's working for everybody. Oh, I've got all in a hot fluster now. I hate it when these things don't work for me because me and technology are not the best of friends. So when things like that go wrong, they throw you off your kilt, don't they? So we're just literally scratching the back of this petal. And as we do that, the vellum starts to curl. Going round and round and round. As you can see, we had a piece of cardstock here that I will bring in to show you. So we've just got lots of little white lines and there is some shape to each one of those petals. Just a slight curl. And if you want that to be a heavier curl, go closer to the edge, or a tighter curl, should I say, and that will help to bring that up. Hello, Lorraine. How are you from sunny Spain? So the tighter you go, or the closer to the edge you go, the tighter it becomes. Now, if the screen's frozen on us. What on earth is going on with technology today? The screen has now frozen on me, um, on my phone. <laughs> Do you feel like somebody doesn't want me to be doing this today? <laughs> so it's showing fine up here. And it's frozen on the bottom here. Um, I am going to keep waffling and I'm going to bring it back round to here. Hopefully that screen will catch up with us. So fingers crossed. Are we working again? Not as far as I can see, but hopefully I'll just keep working down here then. Oh, is it a grey day there, is it, Liz? We've just started. We had beautiful sunshine this morning, but the wind's blowing through a gale at the moment. Um, hence, we've put some lights on just in case it's going to get really dark. So you get to look at me for a little while anyway. Um, so here we go. We have got the flower with some dimension. Literally, by going over that, we've managed to create that dimension. Then I'm just going to go in and flip up each one of these petals. This is harder than it looks, doing this in midair. I have no clue what has happened here, but something has, because it's not talking to us. Sorry, you got all of my stomach then. That was really nice for you. <laughs> um, back down to a camera. So all I've got is my vellum flowers, and I've got two of those. Now I'm gonna show you with the smaller one, because I've got two of the smaller ones done. Oh, this is all backwards. The camera's on the opposite side to what I think it's gonna be. So, we're then going to take our sticky glue. Is it? It's not showing on my screen. Well, hopefully you're going to be able to see this because I can't see what you're seeing. Um, or maybe we are now. Yay, we're caught back up. That's handy. So we're going to take the glue, just pop a little bit of glue in the centre of our flower. And then we're going to take these off centre. Just hold that there for a moment. So you can leave them white, or once you've done all of the colouring, or sorry, all of the scoring. Now I do it, I do it before I colour it. I'm just gonna pop that off to one side for a minute too. Oh sorry, I do the scoring first because I want the white to show through um, on the yellow. 
Uh, we're going to use a bit of mustard seed because it really stands out. And it's a really bright colour, so hopefully the mustard seed will show. Don't you love technology? Look, I've got all flustered. I've got to calm down now, look. So I'm just going to go over the back of that petal. Now you can do it either way. If you would prefer to colour it and then score it, you can. Your, color, your, your white lines may not come through as strong if you do it that way around. Um, but can you see? There we go. So your white lines still come through strong by colouring it. Don't put too much glue on your vellum because it will it because the moisture will help it will make it curl. So you don't want to go with too much glue on there. And then I'm just going to grab a little pearl here. Again, pop a little bit of glue on the back. Don't go crazy heavy with the glue. Pop one in the middle there. Obviously that glue all dries completely clear. And this is one that I did before that's three layers. So it's the same flower, just this one's got three layers. If you want to, you can um, curl the petals a bit more while that's still wet. I can you wanted to you could stretch your petals out it's entirely up to you how you do this it's your style so you do what you like lovely and warm Lorraine that's not necessarily what I wanted to well, actually it's not cold here today it's just turned a bit gray and horrible so anyway that's one way you can use that particular flower um, so we're going to swap to a different flower now and we're going to use some patterned papers. A lot of people are scared to use patterned papers with flowers, but remember, this is paper crafts and it's not a real flower, so you don't have to make it a perfect flower, um, realistic or otherwise. If you like the style, just wipe that and get that out of the way because the yellow goes a million miles. I don't know if any of you have ever used the yellow mustard seed distress oxide but for some reason it spreads a million miles so again we're now going to go in with some patterned paper let's choose a different flower this time um, shall we go with spring petals so I've just taken again I've got two pieces of cardstock uh, paper sorry this is 250 GSM no it's not it's 120 GSM this one um, so we're just going to pop this down don't be scared of any trying something different. The worst thing it can do is not cut it out. Um, and you, I'm sure there's worse things in life can happen to us than that. I'm trying to be clever and not tape it down, but I might make a regret of that move. As I say, those of you that have asked about this little machine, hi Sue. Hopefully, um, you heard me say previously that the company that we were previously getting this from do not have it in stock at the moment. So we are trying to find somewhere else that has got them. Now, obviously, when you do do the patterned papers, you don't see so much of the detail that's available on the flower. Uh, but it will just give you a different look. So we've got a couple of flowers cut out. Should we try a third? Let's go with a third. Hmm, I might try a third in a different pattern. It might look awful, but we'll try. Okay, let's go with a third in a different. Now that's a bit of a dramatic change, isn't it? Again. And with these um, dies, you can do exactly what you uh, you can do the same as you do with your stamped out flowers. So you know when you stamp them out and emboss and shape them and do whatever you do with them, you can do exactly the same with these. So don't be scared to make them move where you want them to be. If you want a petal somewhere, make that petal be where you want it to be. Just pop this machine out of the way. 
I would, I quite like inking a little bit around the edges of things when the um, cardstock, it stops it being quite so flat. So I'm just going to grab some frayed burlap and grab my brown brush. Just make sure it is my brown brush. And I haven't used it for another colour in a panic. No, we should be good to go with that one. Just pick up a little bit of colour on there and I'm just going to give that a little bit of colour before I shape it. So if you are watching this and you missed the start, we had a bit of a glitch with my phone. We've had another little glitch in here too, but hopefully we've recovered from that. And it's caught up with us and we're all happy again. So literally just swiping a little bit of colour over the edge there. And it completely changes the look as well of it being a flat piece of paper, which is quite nice. Oh, can you hear that? That's the leaves going across our roof. If you suddenly heard it, that, that we have a metal roof in our unit, so it can get a little bit loud when it gets windy. So, there we go. We've just added a little bit of colour and texture to those. And then I'm going to take my kebab stick. And I'm literally, like you would do if you were um, curling some ribbon with this one, I'm literally just going to but hold the middle of the, the petal because it's that would be its weakest spot um so make sure you hold it quite tight and you can give that as much shape as you like then i'm just going to pop my nail in there and just pick those petals up around the edge so you can see the kind of dimension we get on there i'm going to do that with so look that was a rose patterned paper these are just old papers out of my old stash um i have no idea which ones they are i just like them so so that's all flowers but when you see it in this shape once you've cut it out you would never know that that was all flowers it's just a textured paper so don't be scared to use what you would pattern papers and things like that that you have in, in your in your stash as they say give those that bit of shape again Now, I do love my little machine. If you don't have the little machine, um, you don't need to. You can have, it'll go through any, these go through any die cut machine. Um, they shouldn't have any problems. You should just be able to use just the standard chim um, sandwiches that you would normally use if, if for your, um, your die cut machines. You shouldn't need to shim anything. But if you do, just a small piece of cardstock in on that flower will give it to you. Let me just pop that in there. A little bit of glue again, don't go crazy with your glue. Just hold that there for a couple of, for a second or so. Now, my pearl is really, 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 really white. So I'm just going to go over the top, which sounds a bit random because I don't want a really bright pearl. And I've popped some ink on there, which is a water-based ink. It's just distress oxide. But how often are you gonna stick your finger in that flower? You're not. So, so long as you don't spend too much time sticking your finger on that gem, it color coordinates. So if you are thinking about the cost of things, all the gems that you've got, go for like the, the neutral colors, because you can always change those colors up. If you've got, um, alcohol inks or anything like that you can easily change a cream pearl to a different colored pearl or a white pearl should i say so that's just done on 120 gsm paper stroke cardstock whichever way you want to talk about it as watching on a phone now betty we'll check you out getting all technical um so next we are going to have a go at some pearl cardstock this is slightly heavier probably Nearer 250, I would have thought. And we're going to have a go with our sunrise die. Take that down. 
Now this will show you a little bit of more of the detail of what's in the flowers as well, which is quite helpful. Pearl cardstock, um, mirrored cardstock, all of those will really show off the detail of the flower. So let me come in. I don't know how well the camera's going to pick this up. Oh, come out of focus. Let me get back into focus and then I'll come in a bit slower. There we go. Oh, it's going again. Let me see if I've got one that's got a shape to it that will show it to you. Trying to catch the light on it. There you go. You can just about make out that pattern and the detail that's within that flower. So that gives you a sneak peek of what I was going to show you, but we'll come back in a minute to that. Again, you can shape and mold these however you want. The one you just saw, I just did quite flat, like you just saw the last flower. This one, I'm going to curl the petals. So again, taking my kebab stick and I'm just wrapping that round. Quite a tight curl. And I'm going to do that with an one other. And now because we had all those little hiccups at the beginning I have no idea how long I've been waffling on to you all. But there's a couple of things I did want to tell you about. Um, we have got our shop open again on Saturday and it was lovely to see so many of you last weekend after the little hiccup of us not being able to do the show that got cancelled. So it was lovely to see everybody. Um, once you've curled all your petals, give it a poke and a wiggle. Keep that wiggle going for a couple of minutes, or a minute or so. Um, the heat from your hand will shape your petals for you. I am not crushing it, I am literally holding it. And the heat from my hand gives you all the dimension to your petals. So again, same one. At the moment, it looks a bit like a, a windmill, ferris wheel, whatever you want to call it, pinwheel, whatever they are these days in whichever country you're in. Um, poking a wiggle, and again, just the heat from your hand is going to expand that and curl those petals up for you. I'm going to pop a little bit of glue in the middle there. This is just our sticky glue, and it sticks just about everything. I've even stuck a pair of shoes together with this at a show before now lady came up to us and said, have you got anything that will stick this? And I flip flop had fallen apart. If you are that lady, hopefully it survived the show, as far as I'm aware it did. Now you don't want these to line up too much and it will fight you because you've got quite a tight curl on those petals. So remember, it's a piece of paper and you're going to win that battle. Just hold that in place for a couple of moments, just while that glue sets. And again, I've taken um, the same cardstock, but in green. Can you see those? I wonder if I can bring that in a little bit better now. So you can see that detail on those individual petals. The green shows it better on this light, I think. And we're just, I'm gonna keep this one just quite flat. It was lovely last week. Lots of you obviously went away and tried what we were showing you and you popped it onto our Facebook group, the Be Inspired page. So it was really nice to see what everybody had been up to. Do you know what? I think I'm going to do another few more of these and build this right up. So if you're with me, we'll do one more. Just spin that round. I know it's a really nice green, isn't it, Marie? But I can't find Marianne even. I can't... Um, tell you who it's from because it wasn't in any packaging so I can't help you out on that but it's just a real Christmassy type green isn't it it really is so again poking a wiggle heat from that hand and we get the dimension if you find it's too tight for what you want you can pull it out a little bit it will hold whatever form you ask it to hold once it's shaped again 
that in there. Don't want them lined up. But that one's gonna try and beat me this time, isn't it? Because that's lined itself perfectly. I think not, Mr. Stamp. Die. Ugh. So you could keep building this up and up and up if you wanted to. I mean, you could even do it like that original one that I showed you that has got like a um, bud center to it. That would be quite effective with this. It's gonna really argue with me, see, it's because it said that they only wanted to be two layers, not three. And then again, I'm going to grab, I'm actually gonna go with quite a big string in here, I think. I've got one. I've got some really big gems, we'll see how that works. It might work, it might not. Ah, there we go. Got one already. That's quite funky. It's big, but we'll give it a go. I'd probably go a size down on this, if I'm honest. If I had them, I would... Let's have a look, see if I've got them in my other box. Yeah, I have. So I'm just going to wipe some of that glue out of there. We don't need all of that. Obviously that glue wouldn't be in there, it's going to dry clear. But you've got all that dimension to your flower. And pop that onto a gift bag or um, tie in your on your Christmas table. How cute would that look? Or if you want to pop it in that massive big gem as well. That looks really effective too. So I would also... Uh, where's my greens? I've got a green here. So we've got our, I mean, look, I'm trying to be really organized and really clean and tidy and it's really not happening. So our berry bunch dies also work really well with this. Now I don't know if any of you saw when I did our Christmas launch on Crane Craft. We used this and we filled each one of the berries with a gem. It looked so effective. I was really pleased with how it looked. we've got that card somewhere which is on there it's a uh, martin's gonna have a look for us it's on those boards in the bag on the boards in martin and it's a christmas card that i did on tv if we can't find it i'll post a picture of it later oh, look, i've ripped that trying to get that out and not concentrating on what i was doing no. It's got flowers like this on it, Martin. There. That's the one. So, this is what we did. Can I bring it in without it being? I was meant to find this out earlier. So, we popped, we actually cut down the berry bunch dye. Um, so we just use parts of it, not the whole length, because obviously it's a really long die. So we just use little sections of that. I'll cut one up and show you what I mean. So we just... You can go in and there's sort of places that it naturally will let you snip. So you've gone from that really long branch to some really cute shorter ones. So it's a really, really handy little die to have. And then as you can see on each one of the berries, I added a little gem. So we've got our um, 
Christmas light stamp set across the top here and the Merry Christmas was from our Christmas ornaments collection. And then just three of those flowers. But that would look really effective. So that gives you some ideas for that one. Where else, what else are we gonna do? Um, so that big flower that you saw me making earlier, this one here, I'm just gonna go in and quickly color the back of the other petal. I want to show you a, a card. But I want to show you quickly how it was built up first. So this one I might bring those petals down a bit. So if you want that more rounded finish to them, literally like you would do um, when you're curling ribbon. So you're pulling against it, and when it goes down, it will go much flatter. Depending on how tight that original curl is on the, your petals from the, when you've um, dry embossed it, uh, will determine how this is gonna actually sit completely flat or not. But it will in its time, you can train this to do what you want it to do. Put a little bit of glue in the middle. We'll take that big gem that we were going to use earlier and put that in here because that will work really nicely with this. Hold that in place and then I've taken the teardrop die and I think there's about seven six or seven of these and position them around how you would quite like them to look and they're all going in the same direction so you obviously get a left and a right in with your dies so these ones were all cut going with the same die. And then you pop that in the middle there. And then you can just move these in to whatever length you want them to be. Now once you're happy with where they are positioned, you've got two choices. Now I would flip this over, pop a little bit of glue on the back here and stick it down. You're on a non-stick craft mat, so eventually that will dry and you'll be able to get that off. Or you can do it with some... We've frozen again. If you can see us, I apologise. Um, if you can't, I'm here. <laughs> so what I was going to show you was this finished card. So all I've done is take those seven teardrop dies and that as I say they're all going in the same direction um, you've all seen me do this background which is literally just the ink all the way on on the center of the cardstock just blended out lighter and just pop that in the middle what a clean simple card that is but again not huge dimension it would go as a large letter through the post uh, but it wouldn't cost you an arm and a leg to get it in the post but a really really pretty card I think um fingers crossed I think we're back are we back Marianne I think we're back so that's the style don't you love technology I'm so sorry everybody for all the hiccups that we were having today they are out of my control it is just the system freezing and I will try and investigate why so hopefully next Wednesday we won't have that problem so once you've built all of that up is literally how quick and simple would that card be? Really, really effective. Um, so I am going to, ho hopefully that's given you some ideas on what to do with all of these different flowers and using all the different mediums that we've got available to us. I haven't got any mirror card here, but I tell you what we have got. We have got some fabulous glitter cardstock. So this is that big flower again. This is our Summer Blooms die. And this is the larger one. And again, look how thick that, I mean, we all know how thick Miri card is. This is the non-shed one. So it has a coating on it as well. 
and that cut through in one cut. Again, I'm just literally curling those petals over. And that you can see I'm giving that a fair amount of welly and it's still holding its shape. Just bring those petals up a little bit. I'm not showing you um, cutting with this large die because I actually have my little machine doesn't cut the larger one. It cuts all the other sizes, not the larger one. Um, and but if these go through every single die cut machine. I think we've had every single die cut machine in our family, and they cut through all of them first time each time. Literally two layers. But you can mix and match the different flowers as well. So we're gonna just pop those two layers there. Let's have a look. The ones that we got here. So we've got some of the sunrise as well, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the sunrise. And pop that in there as well. And then I'm going to take the smaller of our spring petals. So that's the three different, all cut in the coated non-shed glitter cardstock. not to let those petals line up too much obviously the different sizes and the different petals will be slightly different anyway so you want to avoid them getting too lined up and then we're going to pop a gem in the middle there maybe even have I got any foliage in there our new leaves in a combination, so let's have a look. So we've got some glitter cardstock and some, again, this one is one that can be cut down, so you've got natural break points on them all. So you could cut this down if you didn't need such a large leaf. It would cut down very simply, this one. I'm just going to come in close, closer with this so you can see the, te the different textures on there. And again, it's not one that's got too big and bulky, so it would go through as a large letter on the post. And you can just pop that on there. Again, really, really effective. If you wanted, you could go all the way around again if you really fancied it. This one, again, works really well for that same card that I just showed you because of the angles of the the foliage it allows you to do that sweeping circle around so I think that is us showing you all the different types of dyes we have and some of the things you can do with them and the different mediums you can use with them I've gone right up to the 300 GSM cardstock and right down to um, probably 70 70 GSM so, and obviously right down to the vellum, uh, which is amazing. So I want to show you a few of the fabulous cards that have been made with these dies. As you know, we have an amazing design team. We're only little. Um, we are always looking for people. So if anybody's interested in joining our design team, we'd love to see some of your designs and some of the things that you've made using our Honeydew Cast products. We're always open for new members. So, so that's the one we just showed you how to make. Then we have this fabulous one. So this one has got make a splash in the background here. Oh, no, sorry, I lied. It's splish splash in the background. And our um, script sentiment. So Marianne's made 
her own background papers. You know I'm big into making background papers yourself. It makes a huge difference to the card being so unique. And all she's done here is take a circle die, or a circle punch, something along those lines, and moulded the centres so you don't have to make 